Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is the US Futures Weekly Chart Analysis for the week ending 8th of September 2023. First chart is the US Dollar Index Futures as usual. And price moved higher this week as expected. We noted in the previous week the period of consolidation that took place on this bar here. And in response, the market was in a good position to move higher, and it did so this week. Now, above that, you've got a little zone of resistance that goes through here. And remembering it was a four-day trading week this week with a holiday for Labor Day on the Monday, so volume was reduced, about average overall, but for four days, that was pretty good volume. So price pushed higher this week. It didn't reach the resistance zone above, but it must have drawn out some supply from the left, which is unsurprising. You would expect that to be the case. In response this week, I would expect a bar that continued higher. It doesn't look like particularly strong supply was being drawn out. There may be a very small test for supply early in the week. And I'll see price move up, perhaps tag that resistance zone above and close just a fraction below it or right at its lows. That would be the most obvious shape of the bar this week coming. E-mini S&P, this is S&P 500 index futures and they traded lower this week in consolidation mode. There was no attempt to push higher whatsoever. With the strength in the US dollar, that kept this market and many of the other associated markets under some pressure. So there was no attempt to move higher. Price traded as an inside bar all week. And as such, you would expect lower volume to be drawn out. And it was lower volume, although for a four day trading week, it wasn't particularly low. This leaves the market reasonably well placed to continue higher when trading conditions become more favourable. Otherwise, you may see another consolidation bar sideways. So if the US dollar does move up and then consolidate just below that resistance level, this market may get the opportunity just to edge higher. I don't think to any substantial new highs, but it may edge higher. US Treasury 10-year note futures. The lows of the range come through here. And with the strength in the US dollar this week, this market came back, understandably. Volume was very low. Despite it being a four-day trading week, that's very low volume. So selling pressure in this market was very low. And I would expect if there's any opportunity for this market to move higher, it will do so with relative ease. I don't think it's going to accelerate high with a hugely wide spread, but on relatively modest volumes, I expect selling pressure will be relatively low and that will allow this market to move higher with relative ease. Copper price futures. Copper price futures, I'll draw in the line so you can see where we are. They traded lower this week, back to the lows of the range on pretty low volume. So selling pressure wasn't particularly low. And that suggests that demand was low this week. And the price had to come back to satisfy the sellers. So that's not a particularly weak bar in itself. It appears weaker than it really is. And I would expect this market to make an attempt to consolidate this week, perhaps along that line. So you may get a bar that looks more like this this week, unless there's particular weakness or consolidation in the US dollar, which would allow this market to breathe a bit more easily and move higher. But I'd expect some sort of bar where consolidation and absorption is taking place and a bar similar to this wouldn't surprise. Gold price futures. Now gold price futures came back with quite a narrow spread this week. Selling pressure was quite low. The lows of the range come through here, like this. 
spread was very narrow. Volume was quite low, despite it being a shortened trading week. Selling pressure was low. Similar to the copper market, you would expect a consolidation bar if the market remains strong in the US dollar, which would look something like this. And if the US dollar does move into consolidation mode, you may see the market attempt to edge higher a little. I don't think it's going to be substantially higher, but the amount of selling pressure, which is low, suggests this market could move higher with relative ease. Now remember, both these markets, the copper market and the gold market, appear to be attempting to absorb the strength in the US dollar. They don't really want to go down. The opportunity has been there for them to go down and go down hard, and they're not doing so. And that suggests to you that the markets don't want to go down. Sentiment isn't actually weak. It's the US dollar that's strong. And that's causing these markets to be subdued or to falter to some extent. Anyway, this market, given any sort of reasonable trading conditions and a consolidation in the US dollar, will probably edge higher in response. Barring that, look for some form of consolidation sideways again. Silver price futures. Silver price futures, the highs of the range come through here. Now, I usually make this gap bar. I fill in the gap to make it easier to see and read. Loads of the range come through here. You could say that there is a low in there as well. That would be last gasp lows. And prices come back with a fairly widespread on low volume this week. And that can be confusing when you're looking at it and wondering what's actually going on. The widespread suggests that selling pressure is strong. The low volume suggests that selling pressure is weak. And the dynamic in this market really is that price has been forced to stretch lower with an increased spread in order to search out sufficient demand to satisfy the sellers. So while selling pressure may not be very strong, demand has been really weak this week. There's almost no buyers in the market, at least not at this price level around the 24. And because of that, even though there's only a small amount of sellers in the market, relatively small amount, prices had to stretch lower in order to seek out enough demand to satisfy those sellers, despite the selling pressure not being particularly strong. And that's why you get that wide spread. And it's an exaggerated spread. It's perhaps not truly reflecting the market dynamic. But despite that, this market's held on to the lows pretty comfortably and nowhere near the last gasp lows down here. So similar to gold and copper, if the US dollar continues to go higher up to that resistance zone above, look for a consolidation bar in response, perhaps something like that bar. And if there is a period of consolidation in the US dollar, this market may push higher. Where those other two markets would edge higher, this market, when it starts moving higher, the volatility, the enthusiasm of the retail traders often see spreads increase considerably. So you may see an increased spread if this market does begin to push higher in response next week. Like crude price futures moved higher this week after potentially breaking out the previous week. We saw this was the little mini breakout bar and expected supply to be drawn out from the left. Spread did narrow. Volume reduced, mostly because of a four-day trading week. Otherwise, it was probably average volume. And that sort of suggests that some supply was being drawn out. Perhaps we should have a look inside that bar and just see if we can see any supply being drawn out. If there's any danger in there. Here's the daily chart. And... Your four-day trading week began here with a little test for supply. That's there below the previous close. Then prices pushed up and the close off the high suggests a little bit of supply has been drawn out and volume was pretty high. So now we've got the highs of the range coming through here and in behind it, 
you had this is the breakout bar from the previous week. So since the first bar of the week, which was Tuesday, price pushed back up to the highs of the range, tested for supply, which is like a consolidation and a secondary consolidation bar, and price has continued to close higher for the week. So you've had the closes moving in a range through like this. So I would say that the market's pushed higher over two days and then has consolidated for two days. And it doesn't appear that any great amount of selling pressure has been drawn out. If you look at that red bar, the down bar, volume was really quite low that day. So selling pressure was relatively low and the market's just consolidated in response. So no serious danger being seen in that bar despite the narrow spread. I would expect this market may continue to attempt to grind higher. I don't expect that this market is going to blast higher like this. I think it's much more likely the market will grind higher in a trading range more like this. That would be much more likely, I would expect, and replicate something like this previous push higher where market just grinds higher over time. Certainly no weakness is obvious in this week's trading. Aussie dollar currency futures had been trading sideways in this range, broke down a month or so ago. The level below comes through here. And you can see the market's just sitting on top of that. This market's attempting to absorb the strength in the US dollar. It's doing a pretty good job, to be honest. It doesn't look strong at all. It's resisting moving lower and trying to absorb the strength in the US dollar. Now, if the US dollar does move into consolidation mode next week, or at least just moves up to that resistance zone and then begins to consolidate, you may see this market move a little higher. But similar to those two previous up bars, it'll be a weak up bar like these two with high tails up here, lower closes, mid bar or low closes. It'll be a weak up bar, not a strong up bar. In Bitcoin futures, Bitcoin futures appear to have an accumulation zone in the background and the market has had a bit of trouble moving away. It did break out, came back and tested the breakout, attempted a breakout a second time, but failed to do so and attempted to consolidate sideways right up high in the range, but eventually pulled back and we've got a secondary test of the breakout taking place now. We looked last week at this bar, which was a bit questionable. And the first thing to note was there's been no downside follow through in response to that bar. So it wasn't seriously weak if there was weakness in there. And when we looked at the daily chart, it did appear there may be some buying in that bar. In fact, we'll just go back to the daily chart quickly and have a look at it. And the lows of the range come through there. This was that up bar, which did look like buying on very high volume. And then price came back on reduced volume or reducing volumes. And that suggested to me that it was a buy the offer bar. Um, someone was attempting to buy the market without pushing price against themselves too badly. Now this week, four day trading week began on this bar and you've had three days of consolidation and then an attempt to push higher here, which wasn't broadly supported by the market, but volume was well below average. So it doesn't really look like any serious supply was drawn out. So you've had effectively four days of consolidation. There's a little period in there, probably in response to the low volumes. Because look at these low volumes down here. This was the consolidation period for three days this week. There was no selling pressure in there. And that allowed just a small amount of demand to push price higher. There was an attempt to push higher here. It wasn't really a serious attempt because there's no volume on the this bar. And it wasn't supported by the market. And then price fell back under its own weight and just closed level pretty much at the 26,000 level. 
So back to the weekly chart. It doesn't appear there was any great danger in this week's bar. It was effectively a consolidation bar and prices consolidating in response to the previous bar. And the most notable feature of that previous bar, although it looks weak, there was no downside follow through in response, which you would have expected to see if that really was um, full of supply and full of weakness. This week actually closed slightly higher for the week. Volume was very low. So it was a consolidation bar. It was an absorption bar. There was no intent to move higher. It was testing the market for supply and absorbing any supply that was being drawn out in response. This leaves the market well placed to push higher if there is demand in the market. And if not, I expect we continue to move sideways in this consolidation zone. You may get another bar like this if there really is an accumulation, which is a buy the offer type bar. But apart from that, uh, sideways is most likely the direction, at least until some real serious demand arrives. Back to the US dollar. Just quickly before I wrap up, here's the most important level at the moment. You can see the obvious period of consolidation in the previous week here, where price moved back within the range of the previous bar, but closed strongly. And above that, you've got a zone of potential resistance that comes through here. And you can see price moved down, attempted to recover, didn't really break down here, and this is the breakdown bar. So you've got like a complex low. So I just mark it in as a zone like that. And you'll find that there'll be some resistance right at the lows of the range, and it will increase as price moves higher through this range. And I expect there will be some more resistance drawn out from the left if price moves right up here. But at this point, I expect you'll see a little test for supply early, and then price may attempt to move higher, and then close probably back at the lows of this range like this, and you'll get a little narrow up bar. I don't think the market's really going to explode higher. It is possible you'll get a consolidation bar like this with a lower tail. But I think the market's looking strong. There wasn't a great deal of supply drawn out this week. So that suggests the market will attempt to continue higher and probably close at the lows of this range or within it. That's the most likely outcome as I see it. Okay. Thanks for your time. I'll see you again next week. Thanks again. See ya.